TikTok is being banned. They're using AI for influencer marketing. People are de-influencing, budgets are drying up, IG is getting on everybody's nerves, and people are tired of being sold to. So is the influencer era finally coming to an end? digital lifestyle content creator and social media consultant and I teach you how to turn content into a business so if you're new here and you want to learn more about the business behind content creation then go ahead and hit that subscribe button but today we are chatting about the state of the influencer economy and how to like navigate all these changes that are happening one of the biggest changes that I'm noticing right now with the influencer economy is that people are onto us. Like people are just flat out tired of being sold to, both on TikTok and Instagram. Now they're just so full of like ads, commercials, products, TikTok shops, links, storefronts, click this, buy this. And honestly, even as a creator who works with brands, like I'm kind of tired of it too. So my prediction is that creators who really understand authentic storytelling will be able to thrive in this new influencer era. So gone are the days that you get to hold a product and it just flies off the shelves. Gone are the days that you just post it one time and people buy it out. No, in order to really provoke people to take action and buy, you gotta prove that it's worth it. And one way you can do this is by authentic storytelling. I'm talking like a hook, draw them in, tell them a story or a problem, and then authentically fit in the product as the solution. So think less salesy and more relatable. Another challenge is the algorithm. And I know we've heard that so many times, like how we hate the algorithm creators are, they, we just despise the algorithm. But what I'm noticing is that every time I slap a hashtag ad, which you must legally disclose when you're being paid and you post something on Instagram. You have to, according to the FTC rules and regulations, like you have to add that hashtag ad. So every time I slap a hashtag ad on something, it's like the content just automatically plummets compared to my normal scheduled content. And I think this is happening for a number of reasons. Back to my original comment, people are just over being sold to, so they just kind of keep scrolling. But also I think Instagram wants us to put up or shut up, meaning brands, that pay us to create content, Instagram wants in on that too. And it's no secret that IG makes its money off of ad revenue. Let's face it, people have been getting rich off of Instagram for free for years. Well, Instagram encourages brands to run ads. This is basically paying money to access user information in order to like push out your products or your content, uh, a wider variety of people. So if an ad pops up on your screen, it's not by accident, it's because somebody paid for that ad to be there, you were targeted. So what does this mean for content creators? Honestly, I don't think it means anything for us. I think the brands are just gonna have to start putting a little bit more extra money behind their content in order to like expand their reach. And some do this already, like they will request to run ads on you know, your content or they will already build it into the contract with like usage rights. In terms of Instagram, like wanting us to pay or play, that's not something that the creator does, that's something that the brand does. I get it when people say that they don't like influencers and there are some trolls out there. There's even people who like love what you're posting and they will go out of their way to make sure that they don't use your link so that you don't get the 20 cent commission that you're supposed to get. Some people like us and some people don't. Another thing I'm noticing is that there can be a disconnect between influencers and like real world events. I'm noticing on social media that people are like speaking up about their political stances and world news. Um, while influencers are like busy pushing products down your throat just to meet the demand of a brand. So totally get it why, you know, there's a huge disconnect between influencers and the real world. Another thing that I'm noticing is that brands, the budget, it just ain't budgeting like it used to. Um, it is April, 2024 and I'm mentioning that it's April 2024 because if you've been in this game for a while you know it's not always popping like sometimes there are slow seasons just like with any other business and so right now 
the budget ain't budgeting like it usually does. And that just may be because it's a slow season. Um, and that could be due to a number of things. It could be due to like low performing posts. Um, you know, like I just said, the algorithm is suppressing certain pieces of content. It could be because the, the pool of influencers is super saturated. So there's girls who, you know, do the same thing that you do with half the followers and half the budget. Another reason could be the economy. Like people may not just be buying things right now because we're in a weird economic place. So it, it also could be because the budget has just dried up for the quarter. Like they've spent all their money for this quarter. And so they might not get a fresh budget until you know the next quarter or Christmas who knows I also read in the influencer marketing hub benchmark report that brands are using AI and they're using it to identify like potential influencers so instead of like scrolling on Instagram all day trying to figure out who would be a good fit um, they're using AI to figure out who would be a good fit and they're also using AI to identify bogus influencers so if you buy subscribers or you buy followers or you're like in engagement pods, brands are using AI to detect that. Another thing that really stood out to me in the influencer benchmark report is that um, TikTok is the most common channel used by brands and Instagram is in second place. So if you've been following the news that you know that TikTok um, is supposed to be banned, it made it all the way to President Biden's desk and I think he signed it, I don't know, but it, it has the potential to be banned. So what does this mean for, you know, TikTok, which is the number one common place for brand deals? What does this mean for brands? What does this mean for content creators? The TikTok ones and the Instagram ones. I would love to hear like your thoughts um, on the TikTok ban. So if you are a TikTok girl or if you're an Instagram girl, let me know, like, what do you think about this whole TikTok ban? So with all that being said, what is the state of influencing right now? Is it here to stay or is it dwindling? Um, should I put my efforts into it? And my answer is, it's not going anywhere. Benchmark report says it is projected to reach $24 billion this year, billion with a B, and it's supposed to double that by 2028. Um, let's face it, influencers, they're effective. If you pair the right brand and the right product with the right creators, like it just works. So here are some tips for navigating this changing world of influencing without getting lost. Number one, I want you to not give up. Giving up is the worst thing you can do. Um, take a break if you need to, breaks are necessary, but just flat out walking away altogether, I think you might regret it. I don't know if I ever told y'all the story about me giving up on Pinterest, but it was the worst decision of my life. I have finally got to a place where I understood it and I decided to walk away to like focus my efforts on Instagram. And when I walked away, like I like pretty much gave up on it. Um, and what I noticed is that when I went back to pick it back up, like just so much had changed. I felt lost. Like I just felt so defeated and I immediately regretted walking away in the first place. So if you need a break, take a break, but I'm encouraging you not to give up. My second tip is to start diversifying your streams of income. Brand partnerships should be a side hustle. That should not be the only way you're bringing in money as a content creator. There are so many different ways to bring in money, um, like UGC, um, you could sell digital products like courses or eBooks. Um, you could have services, like I'm a photographer. Um, I also coach and I consult. Um, there's community memberships, like people pay just to like get access to your, your knowledge and your expertise. There's also physical products. Like I've seen people like sell journals, um, merchandise, like t-shirts and things like that. And then there's also um, commission and affiliate marketing. So start thinking about how you can really like expand your creator economy, especially during this slow like brand influencer season. Cause it, I mean, I've been in it for a while and I'm telling you it goes up and down. So start thinking about diversifying your streams of income. And so my last tip to really navigate this weird space of influencer marketing is to really start focusing on building relationships with the brands that you're working with. 63% of brands work with influencers more than once. They'd actually prefer 
repetitive partnerships versus like one-off partnerships. So they'll go back to an influencer that they've had a good experience with instead of like going through the entire process of, you know, selecting influencers every single time that they want to run an ad. So don't be afraid to like circle the block on a brand. Um, always over deliver and then keep it cute, AKA keep it professional. So that's all I have for you today, but this was a really good talk. Like felt like it was more like on topic and um, like on like timely really. So let me know in the comments, anything that you guys would like to chat about on here on YouTube. Hopefully you're already subscribed and you're like family, but if not, you know what to do. But I will talk to y'all soon, bye.